wow, parenting, something I never thought I'd actually openly discuss because when it comes to Chloe and, you know, Instagram live, guys, okay? You see the good parts of me and her having fun and all that. But when we are tearing that house down, or she's doing the tearing down and I'm crying in one corner. You don't see that. So uh, I know a lot of people see that Chloe is like a mirror of me. And, and that could be a bad thing in some ways because she also has all the bad qualities that I have. Stubbornness, you know. Now that she's sick, she's suddenly skipped 10 years. She thinks she's 16. I swear I hear the word whatever. And the eye rolling at least six times a day. And, you know, my mother's day, the, the rotan tamari, I think I, I suffer from the rotan trauma. So right now, I've never laid a hand on my child. And if I did, maybe the one time a long time ago, I think I cried for three months. So, you know, that's me. That's why I have uh, Rachel Quack. Quack? Quack? I don't want to get any wrong. Quack? <laughs> Children and Family Development Specialist here. Yes, you know, someone who actually knows what they're doing. Can you tell me a couple of ways how to, you know, because they're smart, you know, six-year-old, to kind of trick them into respecting, really, me w without bruising their ego. Because ego is such a huge thing right now, you know? Most of the time, she's saying no to what I'm saying, basically, just because she wants to argue. So, yeah, I I'm sorry to throw such a, like, heavy topic on you the first time I'm meeting you, but hey, Rachel, give me some answers. Hi, Serena. First of all, I just want to say I want to commend you for being so brave and so courageous in speaking truthfully about what it really is like to be a parent. I think so many times the problem with Instagram and the problem with Facebook is this highlight reel, right? Yeah, everybody seems like they're getting their stuff together. Everybody seems like their kids are perfect. The kids are always smiling. But what's really going on behind the scenes is perfectly normal too. So I think that's the first thing that I want to give you is that what you're going through um, every single mom has mm. likely gone through the same thing or is about to go through um, the same thing. And then the second big thing to also remember for you is that, you know, when you're going through these moments, it's very easy as a mom to sort of say, to sort of panic. And even if it's a low level panic, you know, it's usually it's an unconscious panic. And that's what I always tell the moms that, you know, this is saying so much more about what's going on internally with you. Because what you'll notice is that she can say certain things at certain times and you have a lot more capacity to meet her in, the, in those areas. And then at other times, you're just <laughs> done, <laughs> done. And so I think that would be my first thing is uh, really be thinking about where you are emotionally. I, is your cup filled? Are you taking time for yourself? Are you in a place where you are able to connect instead of correct? Let's talk about connection versus correction. A lot of times what we do, even with our husbands, it, we, we don't always do this with our friends, but with our husbands, with the people we love, with the people that are a lot closer to us, as soon as they give a problem, as soon as they run into something, we go immediately into lecture, nag, correct, fix. Defense mode, right? Basically. Yes. yes. I, th that's why they say the person that's the easiest for you to hurt is the person next to you. It's, it's almost like spitting. It's like, yeah, actually, I don't care. I'm upset. Because now the next person just so happened to be the husband or the child. I completely understand. So yeah. what do I do about it? So with, with Chloe, what I actually would highly recommend is that, you know, what you will notice is that if you make, we call it special mama time. So make mm -hmm. opportunities to connect with her. And you'll notice like when she feels connected, when she feels sort of seen and heard, when she feels like she's had time to play with you, when she feels like she's, she's had you to herself, you'll notice she'll also listen a lot better. You'll notice she's mm -hmm. more likely to, if you ask her to do something, she's more likely to do it. If you ask her to, uh, or if you explain to her why you, you're putting in a certain boundary, she's more likely to follow through on it. So that's really the secret of it is connection before correction and then the second one is making sure that you have boundaries mm. so what are boundaries what are healthy boundaries so healthy boundaries look like consistency looks like that means if these are the rules mm -hmm. these rules stay in this box 
but within that box, she will have freedom within those box. So right. let's say no TV. We say no TV or, or no, here's a better one. So no TV is not fair because it's not realistic. What's more realistic is we say you can have one program or two program, whatever it is you decide between you and your husband or you and your family. Remember, again, uh, very often, going back to the first point, very often we rely on everybody else to tell us how we should parent our child. And really nobody else knows our child or our family better than we do. And so that's for you and your husband and you and your family and you and your child to decide what those rules are and how they work for you. Because what works for me may not necessarily work for you. So boundaries in terms of like TV, if we say we're only going to have one program, she can choose maybe what the program is. She can choose maybe when she chooses to watch the program, but the boundary remains that we will only watch one program, not one program today. Tomorrow, mama's a bit busy, so you can have two programs. And then the next day, oh, you watched two yesterday, so no today. So then you notice how then for a child, it can be very, very confusing. So you want to make sure that what boundaries you have, that they stay consistent um, and that it's not a tool to threaten, punish, or shame. So these boundaries, the idea of these boundaries are to keep you safe and for me to respect you and for you to respect yourself respect each other and respect the environment so like you know like earlier you were saying you know if she rolls her eyes or if she says whatever or so that to me the bigger issue with that one is the connection so why is she why is she why is she wanting to why is she feeling disconnected from you um, and that's the first thing I would explore. Then the second thing would be the boundaries around that. So if that is a trigger for you, and it, it might be a trigger for some people that it's like, that, that's my, that's my like absolute no, I don't like it when you do that. Then you're allowed to say, hey, I see that you're really upset right now. I see that there's something going on within you that, that I, you're just not feeling really good right now. Mm-hmm. And I want to try to understand that. But I can't do that if you're hitting me. I can't do that if you're, you know, so you're putting in these boundaries to say, I'm going to be empathetic. I'm going to understand. But these are the rules. These are the boundaries. And um, sticking with those boundaries. And then the last one is really exploration. So are they having enough time to play? Are they having yeah. enough time? No. Uh, I mean, especially with NCO now, I mean, kids aren't getting a lot of time to run around or they're either, usually the kids are either understimulated because they're not getting enough physical and, and time alone because we're all amped up this, or they're getting overstimulated from the devices, from the, you know, nonstop. Um, if you think of you know, your husband working, you working, and then she's working and stuff. That's a lot of noise going on in a very small apartment. So really being um, thoughtful in terms of, is she having enough time to herself? Because just like us, kids need time to their self. Kids need time to play. And playing is not something um, that is just a toy that does something for you. Play is so much more deeper and richer than that. It's, it's using their imagination. It's at this age, role play is a big one. Art is a big one. Being able to dance or being able to dress up and have no rules of it. So no telling her like, oh, but you're a princess and princesses can only. And then the bigger part to come back to your first point again is that um, playing with her and exploring with her at the same time. Ha, I, w- I- Question, okay, yes. the first one you talked about was connection. The thing yes. here is, right, people like us, the freelancers, we have pretty much been, you know, stuck with them the whole time. So yes. uh, I, think, I think we maybe had too much time to connect. So therefore, uh, it, feels, it feels as though um, hmm, she had a bit too much of mommy, you know? Like right now, she's at my neighbor's house, like, a lot of times she's at the neighbor's house. I have to grab her back and say, hello, balance, I'm your mother, time to eat, you know? So I, I agree with the whole routine thing because, yeah, a lot of times parents uh, parents kind of put that aside uh, for our conven- convenience. If I have back-to-back Zoom, suddenly she's allowed one more episode of what I, I'm guilty, guilty, totally guilty. But I am a very stubborn cancerian. If between myself and, and my husband, I, I think I'm the one who's like, okay, consistency, consistency, consistency. So we got number two down pat. But I, do you think number one is a bit 
of a muddly situation connection right now because in a sense we're stuck together too much so she's kind of connected to me too much today like we're kind of I'm, I mean, how can I ever say I'm sick of her? I'm not sick of her, but I'm sick of her rolling her eyes at me. And I think she's a bit sick of spending time with me because I nag, girl. I go on verbal diary and I can go for one hour nagging you about picking up that jacket. So, <laughs> yeah. Do you think MCO and being together affects this, you know, special mama time, connection time? So again, that's two prong, right? So let's think about what we mean by connection. So connection also requires presence. Connection also requires, connection is, a, is something that connects you both together. And so if you're yeah. there for an hour, that does not feel like connection. That's not connection. <laughs> I think it's self-explanatory already. When being stuck together, I think it's more my problem, right? It's easy to set me off. So I need to calm the hell down. Okay, so point taken on number one. Number two, uh, another two question on- So there's ah, two sorry. problems. The first one is that, you know, that your connection time is really being present, really connecting. Um, and it doesn't have to be like, I mean, it's not realistic to say, oh, I'm going to be like, oh, Chloe, let's go like da, 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 da. You know, a lot of times people think connections like, let's go make a special cupcake together. And it's, that's not realistic at all. Connection Do that, I'm not cleaning that kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> connection time for Chloe might just be, hey, mama, well, can I sit in your lap and read a book together? And can you ask me about my day? And can I tell you stories? Or will you, you know, sometimes at this age, they rarely get babied anymore, right? So, that, so sometimes for her connection might just be, will you uh, dry my hair after I take a shower? Yeah. Or will you drain my hair? So, you know, that's the first part of the first prong. And the second prong, again, is you. So remember how I started this off by saying, is your cup empty? So part of the reason why you're feeling overwhelmed is because it is nonstop. I mean, you're taking care of the household, you're taking care of the husband, you're taking care of meals, you're taking care of like, basically the work is, you know, as freelancers, our jobs have all been you know, sort of like, what are we doing? <laughs> um, this, this is exactly what we're doing though. This is, I mean, this is, I mean, we're adding value for you, whoever you're watching. I hope, I hope we're adding value to you because I'm sure there's a lot of mothers who's going through the same thing. You know, I decided to start this with Rachel because I'm like, I cannot be the only one going through this. Are you ripping out your hair too because of your child, especially a lone, a lone child, you know? They are at six years old. She's at that threshold where she sometimes wants to be babied and sometimes she's like, why are you petting, petting me so much? Why are you hugging me? It's so embarrassing. Like, so you, when you see my Instagram, I used to video her a lot and, and now she won't let me. So yeah. I, I kind of thought, okay, ooh, yeah. I, mean, I didn't really ask her for permission when she was younger. So now, now I, I'm trying to respect that. But would you agree with me as we sum this up that there's all this, all this language about whatever. I don't want to answer you. I don't want to pick this up. It's all because we did not set the very clear boundaries, especially about YouTube. And she just picked whatever she wanted, you know? I think uh, because a lot of the language that she picked up, I found when she was watching, whatever she was watching, it was from there, you know? And so I cannot sit there and police her the whole time she's watching YouTube. So I don't, uh, this will be for another episode. How do you... Uh, teach them that you know YouTube language is not exactly how we talk normally because a lot of times it's too Americanized and there's nothing wrong about that you know it's just it, it doesn't sound very respectful a lot of times to us and they don't really know how to use the jargon yet so you know she just goes whatever you know like because it's a cool word you know right. so that's for another topic altogether but my point was because I know she's really smart eventually we gave her the, the, the YouTube and I fully admit that it was because of us. The consistency was not there, like clear boundaries. So we did take our shortcuts. When we had our Zoom meeting, she was on that thing for like longer than, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so eventually we stopped it completely. Now we're starting on a clean slate. I know it's very abrupt, but she is not allowed TV at all at home. And, and, and anywhere she goes, I'm policing her like crazy. I said, you know, you know, never mind. This you will see in a bit that this is for your own good and I'm talking to her more. So I hope Dr. Rachel thinks this is okay. 
actually um what i will say is that to come back into connection so to come back into a place of asking asking her you know what's going on or what would you like today you know because you said sometimes she feels like being baby then sometimes she doesn't and so i think a lot of times we take kids as um i'm here and the kid is here and i need to do all these things to you but what if we respected them and looked at them as equals and said what do you need you know because mm -hmm. just like only we know what our family needs only she knows what she needs right now and if she's allowed to say hey mom could i have a hug or hey mom i just want to talk about Hey, mom, I want to tell you about this. So if we're policing, if all the time we're telling her, you know, if we're nagging, what you're going to have, what's going to start happening is she's going to start lying or she's mm. going to start trying to hide it from you. Because I know that if I tell her, then what she's going to do is she's going to tell me all the things that I'm doing wrong about it. And so instead, remember, we're going back to connection, going back to saying, how can Chloe and mama make this work together? So how can we come together versus I'm telling you what to do and you go do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's the thing. I mean, uh, well, Rachel and I met, I'm meeting each other for the first time. What happened, to give you a premise, was uh, as, as the, you know, soft mama, you know, it, is, is, it has always been, it has always been this until, until, the YouTube came in. So we got to have a second episode on that now. But right now, to summarize what we did today, I think it's what it's great. Thank you so much uh, because it sums up what we really need to do. I need to work on my connection and we need to work on our boundaries. And I think ultimately it's also communication, isn't it? So communication with her, although she's rolling her eyes, patience comes from my side a lot. So thank you very much. Can I call you doctor? I love that. Can I call you I'm doctor? doctor? I'm not a doctor. Okay. But I want to call you doctor. But, and also, you forgot the big one, which is that it's time for yourself. The big I'm one is Serena taking care of Serena, you know? That's the one all mamas forget. You know, yeah. I'm going to summarize all this. You're going to get that on the description. We're running out of time. You see, everything, every good interview runs out of time especially when it comes to parenting we're going to try and make this as short as possible for all the snippets with rachel if rachel has time for me i know you, you're like chop a block but today's summary i will do that at the bottom and so i'm not going to call you doctor i'll just say respectful parenting with rachel and serena how about that yeah that's great